Hi everyone, it's Alan with Earth Glow, and today's video I wanted to take you behind the scenes to my kitchen that is currently in the process of being renovated, but we're gonna make some candles. I'm just filling up my DG boil. It's 45 pounds and usually I try to fill it all the way up when I'm making my soy candles. I have to let some of the wax melt down to fill it more because there's so much air that's in the soy wax and I'm just getting it powered on. This usually takes a few hours for it to heat like to set out all of my tins that I'm going to be working with and today I'm making 108 candles and then I just put the lids in a little postal crate it's gradually heating up getting out my wicks and just cleaning out the jars that we're going to be using today usually I just like to run a little bit of rubbing alcohol through these get rid of any dust and we are melting, oh my goodness. Just placing the wicks, the CD14s in all of my containers and I'm gonna be grabbing some of my supplies and just some of my fragrances um, that I'm gonna be using today, I set out. So I am just putting my wicks um, into the containers, adhering them with the Permatex Clear Adhesive and measuring out my fragrance. So right now I am making my Spill the Tea uh, fragrance measurements and that uses lemon pound cake as well as French lavender from Candle Science. And I will put all the recipes that I use in the description box in case you wanted to try any of them out. But what I'm doing now is actually really bad. So I'm measuring into this very small beaker and then I realized that um, I only need half that for one of my pouring pitchers, so I end up mixing it and then putting half of it into another beaker so that way it's pre-measured um, for my pouring pitcher. Here I am like realizing, oh no, <laughs> what did I do? I haven't made candles in bulk for about a month and a half or two months, so I'm doing a fairly big restock and I'm like, oh my goodness. So I'm going to be pouring, um, I believe, 4.8 ounces of the 9.6 that is in that little 500 ml beaker into um, another beaker. And I'm just mixing it all really good so that way my blend is consistent. And it's so easy to spill. Um, I do like to pour down a chopstick or my guilty habit is pouring down the stick thermometer but look at, I still spilled some, so I'm gonna uh, just use my paper towel and just like an all-purpose cleaner, really. You can use rubbing alcohol, but all-purpose cleaner is generally just fine. Um, and <laughs> I'm cleaning all of it up now, and I'm getting basically all of my blends that I'm gonna be using in oils uh, for the candles all done first before I make anything, um, I like to measure out all my fragrances. And now I think I'm doing, I finished the spill of the tea, which was the French lavender and the lemon pound cake. And now I think I'm doing the Florida sunshine, but we're gonna find out. Um, but these are all going into the 250 ml beakers um, that I get on Amazon and I use these uh, for all my fragrances in the pouring pitchers. They fit just perfectly for one pouring pitcher. Um, and I think I got a little too much of that fragrance. So this is a 50-50 blend of Blood Orange and Orange Blossom from Candle Science. And this is one of my most popular summer candles. I call it Florida Sunshine. And oh my God, it smells so divine. So I'm measuring into these 4.8 ounces, so it would be 2.4 ounces of each. And this is gonna make nine candles. So they're at about 10% strength. Um, in each pouring pitcher, I put 50 ounces of wax and that will make me nine of my eight ounce, um, 10 six ounce candles. 
And next up, I think we're doing, are we doing, oh, we're doing another Florida Sunshine again. I'm doing, I think, 18 of these candles. So two full pouring pitchers of 50 ounces of wax each to make 18 of my eight ounce tin, six ounce candles in the Florida Sunshine. And I didn't want to edit too much of this footage because um, let me know if you all enjoy this, but this is just kind of basically letting the camera run as I'm doing things. And <laughs> I wanted you to all just see behind the scenes. Um, I was trying to wait until my kitchen was redone all the way. We're still finishing the backsplash and the painting the cabinets and painting the walls. But I was like, you know, I think they might enjoy seeing more raw footage. Just to have playing in the background when you're making candles or when you just want something to watch and laugh at maybe. <laughs> but I really have a lot of fun doing this and I usually like to play music in the background. Um, so I did have to edit out some of the sound because the YouTube will um, not like it if I have lyrics in the background of music that's under copyright, but. So now I think I'm doing my Lavender Zen candle. And that one is a blend of lavender and French lilac by Candle Science. And I, again, put all of my blends in the description box below, or I put a link to them in the description box so that you are able, yep, there's the lavender, um, so that you're able to try them out if you enjoy them. And then the French lilac. I think this one's mostly lavender. But I do keep a Google Doc of all of my recipes. So that way I don't have to keep them in my head. <laughs> because that it just wouldn't work very well. Some of them are blends that I've kind of tweaked over and over to get to where I like them. And so they're not like all 50-50s or 3 to 1s or 4 to 5s, etc. And next we're going to do the Stormwatch, I think, which is a blend of sea minerals and lavender driftwood. And I believe that one is a 50-50. So I am measuring out, I think I'm just going to make nine of these. The After the Rain blend that I do is so much more popular than the Stormwatch. But there are some people who enjoy the Stormwatch and the After the Rain together or just the Stormwatch. So of course I have to restock it. But this one is really dramatic and it's like, it's like an incoming storm. And to me, it has a lot of childhood connotations because when I was little, my mom would always be in the Yankee Candle store and we would be, she would be looking for candles for hours and hours. And the ones that I liked, see, I didn't really like being in the store to begin with. But um, when I did try to like look at things, um, it was more like the fresh scents that I liked. Like she would stay in there for hours and hours and I just got so tired of it. But um, yeah, so there was this Stormwatch candle that they had and I absolutely loved it, but she would never buy it because she said like, oh, you know, I don't like that one. You know, she liked the gourmand fragrances and the fruity fragrances. And at that time, I was more into the clean, you know, cologne, perfume-like kind of fragrances. And my grandmother liked them, so she would buy them for me, but my mom, no. So now we are mixing what I think is the After the Rain candle, which is a blend of French lilac and fresh cut grass by Candle Science. It's mostly French lilac, but that little bit of fresh cut grass in there just really, really, really is magical. And it makes this really earthy kind of component to it. I never would have thought blending those two fragrances would work out. Um, but sometimes like when I'm almost out of a certain fragrance, I'll do like sort of a garbage can fragrance batch or something where I basically like use whatever I have and make like a limited edition of something if it works out. And this was one that just was a hit um, from day one of trying it. And so I believe I'm going to be making four batches of nine or 36 of these after the rain candles. And it is such a beautiful, clean, earthy summer fragrance. 
So I'm pouring some into the smaller beakers from the larger beakers um, after I had mixed it. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend doing this. It can create a mess if you do end up spilling. And also you wanna make sure you mix really well because the oils can be different like viscosities sometimes, different densities. So now I am measuring out my wax and I fill each of these pouring pitchers with 50 ounces of 464 soy. And that will make me nine of the eight ounce tin, six ounce candles. And I like to get this wax up to um, about 188, 190-ish. The DG boil reads at like 183, but the actual temperature is more like 188, 190. And so that allows me to fill two pouring pitchers at the same time. Like I'll fill one, set it off to the side and fill up another one. And then when I get those down to 185, 186-ish, I will be um, adding in my fragrance oil. And it works really well for me personally. Um, I will say that like, I didn't start doing two pitchers until making candles for a few years because otherwise it would have been too overwhelming. You see how the DG boil reads 181, but it's not 181. So I'm taking the temperature of these with my stick thermometer to make sure I'm getting a really accurate reading. And sometimes I do kind of have to move it around a little bit in the wax. And these two pitchers will be within one or two degrees of each other because I literally poured one and then the other right afterwards. And so then I will be adding my fragrances at the same time and stirring both pitchers simultaneously for two minutes timing it with my camera basically um i'm looking at my phone <laughs> um which is also recording this so that i can time it for two minutes and then i am letting those ones sit off to the side and doing another two pouring pitchers as those ones cool down to 135 to 145 and sometimes you'll see me using the infrared and sometimes the stick thermometer, but the infrared thermometer will usually register 10 degrees warmer than the stick thermometer, um, between five and 10 degrees warmer. Um, but I have tested them against boiling water and the infrared thermometer does have a pretty big air margin. So I like to double check with the stick thermometer, kind of like a candy thermometer, just gets those really precise readings. And so we are going to be adding in the fragrance. Um, by the looks of this, I'll bet you that that is more of the after the rain fragrances that I'm doing. And I'll usually have like six to eight spatulas in total. And I will reuse the same spatulas if the fragrance is in the same fragrance category. So I'll just like wipe them off, set them off to the side and reuse them as long as it's like two fragrances that are both gourmand or both fruity or both floral, etc. And I've never experienced any um, noticeable contamination from doing that. But this next one I am going to be doing I don't know what the fragrance is. I think it's the Florida Sunshine. But basically my procedure is to get as many pictures done as I can. And so then they all cool at relatively the same time. And I will have to go um, probably in the next like 20 minutes and pour the ones that were um, done first because otherwise they're gonna get too cool. And I don't wanna pour them any lower than like 125. So today I was making Florida Sunshine, Lavender Zen, Stormwatch, After the Rain, and I think that's about it. Uh, spill the tea, did I say spill the tea? So there were like five or six different scents that I was restocking. And in the summer, this is one of the things that I would criticize myself for. Um, I have so many fragrances that it's very difficult to keep them all in stock. And my clients love the variety. I've never had trouble, like, there have been a couple that are really difficult to sell, but in general, making these smaller batches of nine, I haven't had too much trouble with not being able to get them to sell, but it is a lot, like, to keep track of with the labels and printing everything and 
keeping all the fragrances fresh and in stock um, is definitely a lot. So I would say like, don't make that many cents. Like you only need maybe two or three, I think for a holiday collection really. But I, I grew up in a home where my mom literally bought so many candles and I wanted to have all of these scents in my collection that I grew up with and have it be seasonal. Um, so I do my summer loving collection. And then in the fall, we have the autumnal glow and the winter is the winter wonderland. So it's just really special to me, but I wouldn't recommend it as like a general business rule per se. And um, so I am stirring these ones in and this is where I keep all of my pouring pitchers. I just use a towel so that way it doesn't damage my countertop um, from the hot metal and I just kind of am letting them cool. And as I'm doing this, I'm also keeping an eye on the ones that are getting the coolest. So I have them lined up like in order. So the very first ones, once they get down to at the very lowest 125, I make sure that I pour those candles. And I like to pour them between, I would say 135 and 145, but sometimes I'll even take that up to 150, even 155 at the highest with the 464. I have a funny story to tell you all. Um, when I first got the DG Boil, like eight months ago, I filled it with wax with 464. And so you have to kind of put parts of it together. And anyways, I went to turn it on. Actually, I didn't even turn it on. So I turned the power on, but I didn't, like I had the spout to what I thought was all the way closed. And as it was heating up, I was just like in the kitchen area, you know, I was so excited that I'd gotten the DG boil. And by the way, this is originally intended for making beer in, but a lot of candle makers use them for making candles and they sell them on Etsy for like $800, but you can get them on, I think, Howdy Brewer for like 200 and some. But anyways, I was filling this thing up and it was um, heating and I was just in the kitchen area and next thing you know, this DG boil begins leaking. And I started freaking out because by the time I saw it, there was quite a bit of wax that was all over like my table and the floor and just everywhere. And so in order to get it to stop, I actually had to like figure out how to stick my hand into the boiling wax because the spout was not tightened enough. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so anyways, just a little um, note there. If you do get a DG boil, I would recommend putting a very small amount of wax in it at first and making sure that your spout is really tight. Um, and because mine wasn't quite there. So I am taking the temperature of these and the ones that are at 125, between 125 and 145, 150-ish is the temperature that I am pouring these. And this is gonna be the after the rain. And I usually like to make these little notes on the post-its and put them in front of the candles because I do my labeling afterwards, just in case I spill, which I almost always do. Um, I like to do my labeling um, after I've cleaned everything up if there is a spill, which usually I would say there's at least three or four. So we're just pouring the Florida sunshine candles now. And then I'm going to go through and put all the wick bars on as many of these as I can. And you can see by the coloring that my after the rain candles, it would have been nice if I had gotten those wick bars on a little bit earlier, but didn't happen. So I may have to do a little bit of touch up, but that doesn't really matter to me anyways, because the when I put the crystals on, I end up having to... Um, use a creme brulee torch in order to get the crystals uh, to stay properly the way I like them. But this is the next day, and so I'm gonna go through and cut the wicks. And now that I've done that, I am going to be adding the warning labels first. Usually though, before I even do this, I will check to make sure that all the spills have been cleaned up. Just printing off my front labels. I love doing this. I just use an HP inkjet printer and I have an ink plan and it cost me like six, $7 a month. 
but look at the quality of these. Like, I am so happy with the quality. Laser printers could not do that for me. Um, I tried. So anyways, these are the warning labels that I'm going to be putting on. And I do make my own custom warning labels as well. But um, you always want to make sure you have the right stuff on them because there are certain things that they legally need to say um, in order to be like warning labels for a candle sold in the United States. But I can do a video on that if anyone's interested. Just let me know um, as far as the legal requirements. But these are the Florida Sunshine front labels. And what I do to get the pictures is I actually buy them on Adobe Stock. And I think it costs like $3 to get the rights to the image. And once you have the rights, the legal rights to use the image, you have it like for life. And so you can just save the images that you use. And I just use Maestro Label Designer to make these labels. And they just, to me, they work out so well because I do it in that one stop. And then I print them using Maestro as well. So I never have to go through Canva or the only thing I do sometimes have to do is compress the images a little bit because um, I think Maestro only accepts like, I want to say five, is it megabytes? So if it's above that, you do have to compress them a little bit. But what I do is I tend to just press from the inside out and that allows me to get a pretty good um, label on there. I don't typically get too many bubbles with these. So these are the matte and these are the weatherproof matte from online labels. And I usually have more trouble with their gloss labels. So I tend to not buy their gloss finish. And when I want a gloss effect, I will use a Krylon spray paint, um, a clear um, triple gloss spray paint on top of it. And that generally works better if I want a gloss. But for all of these, I just do use the matte, just the weatherproof matte and that weatherproof, whatever it is about it, um, allows you to have a much easier time resticking these. And you ideally want to get it on the first try, but they just have a little bit more um, leniency about them, if that's a word. <laughs> but... This is such a therapeutic process and I try to do it when I'm not in too much of a rush. And I also recently redid all these labels. So I wanted these full image qualities on the front as well as the top label. So like the full image so that when they're burning their candle, they have the beautiful picture on the front as well as the top. Um, Cause you know, you don't always have the top label um, when you're burning the candle nearby it. Some people do, but I just thought it was special to have it in both places. And you can see my tile backsplash in the background with the little spacers because I am still in the process of having that done. But I just wanted to take you all into my kitchen. This is where I make most of my candles. Um, it's not upstairs. Um, I just was using that space uh, for my YouTube as the kitchen was under the process of being renovated. But, oh my goodness, I'm so happy with how these labels came out. These summer ones, I had just found the images for these new labels in the last month or so. So, I never have the same crystals. Um, that's one of the things that I like uh, and have a lot of fun with on my candles is I always am changing up what I'm doing. And a lot of it just depends on what I have in stock as far as the minerals that I have available to me. Um, so it's kind of like an intuitive pick almost based on what I have available. So I just kind of put some on top and then let's see, let's do a little bit of green on this one. So I'm gonna take some Peridot. That was Golden Healer, by the way, that we just put on. So I'm gonna sprinkle some Peridot on here as well. And then... Just kind of eyeballing what I like for now. Okay, and then maybe the last thing for these um, will be 
we do a little tiny bit of rose quartz um, or maybe we should do a little bit of rhodonite. Let's do a little bit of rhodonite. I like the vibe that that gives me for the summertime and it adds a little bit of size difference to these as well, which is kind of nice. And I might get too many on here at first, but we can always go in later and remove things as necessary. So that's kind of a nice start to those. So for these after the rain candles, I was thinking of doing a little mix of some blue lace agate, kind of for the main stone on these. And then, I may have to grab some more of this. And blue lace agate is a pretty pricey mineral, so I'm gonna go a little bit, well, I haven't really gone sparing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add some peridot just to give it that really earthy kind of feel that I want. And last, I'm just gonna add some of these very small amethyst pieces just to really give it that lilac um, color from the lilac fragrance that is in this one. Sometimes I try to, if I can, coordinate the crystals with the labels as well as the fragrance notes as much as possible. So then what I'll do is just kind of press the crystals into the wax and it's usually easier to do this if you do make the candles and add the crystals in a relatively close proximity to each other. Like I would say like the same, um, like the same couple of days. So I will just leave it like that and then I'll come through with my torch later to kind of make this look finished and each one is going to be different and I just kind of intuitively choose um, where to put the crystals for each one but I do generally keep the crystals more off to the sides. next thing I'm going to be doing is just going in with this creme brulee torch and basically making these look more finished. So melting the wax slightly on the surface. And I would recommend using a heat gun if you're at all new to this because um, the crystals can pop and the heat guns are a little bit safer. And also it is possible to light the wick on fire pretty easy with the torch, the creme brulee torch. So the heat gun is just a little bit more user friendly, but I find that the creme brulee torch works best for me. Just would always recommend wearing eye protection with it. And I do try to keep the flame to a pretty low setting. Having that wax pressed in just a little bit before we do this just helps those crystals not to move as much and they may still move a little bit which is kind of part of the look I've learned to embrace it almost but um, just want to kind of keep most of them to the sides which is what this helps with. Sometimes I'll do a second pass as well. Just kind 
of letting them harden a little bit in between. are the hummingbird candles and again just kind of focusing it to the side here Ooh, I see one that I didn't put the crystals in on yet Just kind of looking to get all those messy spots evened out. So now that the Florida Sunshine Candles, um, the wax has mostly hardened, uh, I'm going to be just grinding a little bit of golden lipidolite mica on the top, just as our signature kind of finish that we do on all Earth Glow candles. And I do purchase this from Rough Stone Rocks and you can get this in sheets and it just kind of has that irregular finish to it, which I really like. And I do just put a little tiny bit on here just so that way um, you don't have a fire hazard because um, the golden lipidolite mica, technically it will burn. The last thing that I'm going to be doing is just adding the lids on and the top labels. So those are my hummingbird top labels and I print those the exact same way through Maestro. And these are the 2.875 inch circles which seem to work just perfectly for these 8 ounce jars or tins I should say that I get from Aztec or the flaming candle. And I just love that. So then the Lavender Zen top labels, just so beautiful. And the Storm Watch, you got the lightning bolt, so dramatic. And then that is the final effect of the labels on the candles. And this is pretty much the whole process. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and tapping the notification bell. Um, let me know in the comments if you enjoy this type of a video and I will definitely try to film more of these types of videos um, behind the scenes of just me making candles and really informal type videos like this kind of barely edited footage um, just showing you kind of what I do. We're doing the spill the tea uh, top labels right here. But anyways, I hope you're having an absolutely beautiful week and I hope that you're enjoying this beautiful summer weather and I'm sending everyone love and light and happy candle making.